Welcome back to our third installment in this week's series, uh, which is pretty much all about that bank. It's all about that bank. About that bank. About that bank. No money. No, we're gonna get. But before we get into our topic, allow me to introduce the greatest guys in gaming I have ever met, and I haven't met many, so. Bye. Bye, associate. To my left, I have the host with the most, Mr. I'm Wondering himself, Pete Anderson. Hi. He fucking he said he was going to do it and he did it. And by the way, um, he finally got a fucking haircut, so. Yeah, wow, well, congratulations. Yeah, I don't look like fucking Sasquatch anymore. <laughs> Pete, you always look like Sasquatch. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and to my far left, I have the greatest Zelda fan in the world. If you don't believe me, check out his right arm for the tattoo of the Triforce. Laters and laters. <laughs> laters. <laughs> okay. Laters. Laters. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jeremy Bird. What's up, guys? Biggest Zelda fan in the world coming at you once again. <laughs> and <laughs> I have <laughs> the <laughs> best ponytail in the business. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Nicholas De Jesus. And today we are going to be talking about whether or not sandbox games are worth it. But before we get into that, here's just a thought. When is Konami going to stop being a child <laughs> about this whole Kojima Konami shit. I cannot believe that they banned Kojima from the VGAs. I I saw I watched the announcement and literally I forgot the answer was, but he's standing next to the Metal Gear Solid 5 award and basically he's like, yeah, unfortunately Hideki Kojima cannot attend this. He has been banned due to a legal dispute by Konami via lawyers. So now we know he is in Tokyo, Japan watching this live. And I, that's about all I heard. We wish he was here. Hopefully we'll get to see Clearly him Clearly not, year, or they would not have that band. Yeah, but just, I, that's I, bullshit. I just that's cannot. That's straight up bullshit. I mean, let's say, let's say, right, because cause the, 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 the theories are just fucking running rampant, right? What happened? What was going on over there? And I think that regardless of how Konami tries to paint the situation, they're, they're going to come out as the bad guy. They, they are. They're gonna, they've they're already gonna fucked up more times than you think they can count. Here they are, not being the bigger person, and just saying, all right, you know what, we had our outing, you were a childish prima donna, or whatever happened with Kojima, whatever he was doing, whether he was acting like a, a Hollywood starlet, or whatever he was doing, and, and Konami just saying, even if Kojima was acting like that, Konami just saying, you know what, you can still attend the VGAs, it is your VGAs. creation, oh, I'm sorry? It's the game, it's the game awards. Yeah, whatever. VGA's Video Game Awards. Fuck me then. Excuse me. <laughs> this is my house. <laughs> you can still you can still attend the awards. You know who cares? Whatever. It is your creation. It is it is your your nomination. Regardless of what our beef is, you were still the founder and yeah. the father of this. So whatever. Let's just squash it's, it. Though. It's just stupid. But, but they're they're perpe they're perpetuating this this whole childish fucking like like syndrome that's just gonna go around and around and around and around until somebody is in the fucking ground I just I just don't understand why as a company they can't just fucking get off of their high horse and just go you know what you're right we, we you know whatever happened happened but let's just bygones are bygones let's move on it's bullshit because they Metal Gear Solid 5 won two awards last night and fucking he got jerked on the situation that's complete bullshit last week yeah last week sorry that is not how we do it. <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> yeah, last week, excuse me. Sorry, yeah. You fucking got it. Sorry. But... The wall has been broken. <laughs> I broke it once before. Deal with it. But, yeah, I, I just I just feel like that some somebody needs to just be the bigger person right here. And just and just move on with their lives. I cannot wait for Konami, uh, for, excuse me, not Konami. Uh, Kojima? Kojima to actually be able to speak. I think, I think yeah. he stops. I think... Like once the year ends, by the time we do our game awards, which is going to be coming out the last week of this year, three weeks away, um, I think that's when he'll finally be able to speak up about yeah. this. And I, I, I don't know. I could see him January first being like, working with Sony. I have my own team. I'll see you guys in five years. <laughs> Pretty much, right? I mean, he could do I, that. I, I could hey, see. Hey Konami, I'm going to Nintendo, you little <laughs> bitch. I could see him. No, no, I don't think he would. Go I'm, to joking, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I think Nintendo, would, but Sony, Sony would be that. Yeah, I most think I think Sony is the most prevalent prevalent uh, person for him to go to, or prevalent company. Because Sony to go could to. say, "We here, take all your people. Here's five years. Here's a, whatever money you want. We'll see you in five years." Yeah, pretty and much. And if you want to do a, 
I could see no, no, him. No, no, like, I could like, see him creating that fucking Silent Hill game that everybody wanted yeah. as a no, no. I was gonna IP. say. Here's what the exec says. Here you get everything you want. Your team, whatever. Please don't come with this. If you want to do a Metal Gear Solid Five game, <laughs> think about it. <laughs> they I can just picture him like that. Nah, nah, nah. But just he's gonna. How dare you? No. Nah. nah, it's just what I like. I think he could pull the uh, Silent Hill game, but just. Like you I said, he whatever he's going to say... But I he doesn't need to call it Silent Hill. He can whatever call it whatever he wants to. He, wants to. he could call it Hills like, of Silent. He could call it whatever. He can call it the Hills Have Eyes for who gives a shit. He could call it alternate dimensions in which things are scary. <laughs> like <laughs> He could call it Metal Gear Solid 6. <laughs> I mean, he could... Uh, legit, how dare you? No, no. In all honesty, he could go to Sony, create a game called Guilt, and that would be the new Silent Hill with Norman Reedus and Guillermo del Toro. Yep. And it would have the same fucking effect because that's basically what Silent Hill is. is yeah. about dealing with your guilt. And they would just be like, I can't touch this because it's it's a title based off of the theme of Silent Hill. Yeah. <laughs> and of course it's got to involve guilt because that's the theme. But you can't trademark a theme. Mm-hmm. You could do something like that. Just imagine. You would have Norman Reedus walk on screen. His name fades into smoke. Guillermo del Toro fades into smoke. And then all of a sudden, here's the big trailer. He goes, and introducing for the first time Hideki Kojima. <laughs> The internet would light on fire. <laughs> they would. I mean, I mean, he can he can write his own ticket, but that's that's assuming that he was the bigger person in this whole controversy. Yeah. That's assuming that he wasn't a prima donna. He wasn't acting up. He wasn't being like a little like like prissy French fucking artist. Like, oh no, everything has to be like this. Like like <laughs> one of those. You know what I mean? Like, can you do that French accent? No, again? no. Well, no, here's, here's what garbage. I was gonna ask. Has Rewind it. It's <laughs> here's what here's what I'm gonna ask real quick. Has anyone heard what Kojima is like as a real person? Is he a nice guy? Is he an asshole? Is... I don't know. Anything I don't know about either. Him. That's the big thing I've always wondered. Like, what type of person is he? He was born on a mid. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I know I know one thing about Hideo Kojima. He likes women. He and I share the same birthday. Really? Yes. He was born August 24th. Nice. 1960-something. But I was born in 86. <laughs> 68, 86. There you go. But that's awesome. Yeah, him and I share the same birthday. And the only reason I know that is because in Metal Gear Solid 2, when you put your birthday in, if you don't put in your name, it'll automatically put Hideo Kojima's birthday in. It'll automatically put his name in. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Nice. That's just a what? great thought. Okay. <laughs> so it's like bullshit he got banned, but we'll see. Yeah, what whatever. I mean, I, I just feel like like somebody's gotta step up and just be the bigger person. And I mean, he will. And, and they're they're, they're just like they're just like pushing each other in the play yard, like me and Pete do every episode of Improv Gaming. Which you can see at youtube.com slash improv gaming. So Nick, what yeah. are the best sandbox games which are the bang for oh, your buck? The most bang for your buck on a sandbox game. Middle Gear Shelly. Fallout 4. No Man's Sky. Infamous before Second Son. <laughs> <laughs> I would actually say, to be honest, it would be Just Cause 3. Uh, 2. Just Cause 2. <laughs> Just Cause 2 was, was probably the most fun I had in a sandbox environment. Just because everything was just... it. Unlike Metal Gear Solid 5, The Phantom Pain, there wasn't just one palette of colors. It wasn't so boring. Uh, in terms of visually, like everything was just lit up in, in Just Cause 2. Uh, f- unlike Fallout, you know, you're not dealing with a decrepit, dying world, and you're not dealing with an over encumbrance issue that I always deal with, where I carry too much and then I can't run or fast travel or so do anything. Shit. Like, like that's, that's, you know, you don't have to deal with that. It's, it's, it's light enough. And it's not as in depth enough for it to be very, very, very fun. Just consistently fun, where you can just blow shit up. You can tether people to fucking poles and shoot them and blow up barrels and like shoot the barrels and tether them to a pole and have it wrap around and smack somebody and just do all these crazy fun things. And I can't wait to play Just Cause Three. That's what I was gonna ask. Did you get the third one yet? I can't wait to play Just Cause Three, just because it's gonna be that much more fun. If, if you were late, we were gonna go pick it up. Yeah, if you were running late, we were gonna go run out and pick it up. <laughs> I probably would have bought one too. I probably would have gotten it too. Just because. Just cause. But just, just cause. cause. Hey. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. But that would have just been just cause too. Ah! <laughs> we 
could have been. We're terrible. We have not slept, and we've we've been dying to get back into the fucking game, into 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 recording these episodes. We're having way too much fun these these this series. Well, if we had gotten what? three copies of that game, we could have made it just cause three. That was the joke, Jeremy. That Damn, was the joke. That is not how we do it. <laughs> that was the joke. Like a bisexual. <laughs> what the fuck is this? Oh, what? <laughs> Ted Turner, Family Guy. Oh, yes, Ted, okay, that, okay. yes, Ted, that was the joke. Okay, all right. <laughs> yes, Ted, that was the joke. I, 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 you I, almost I, went to the fetal position again. I was about to go, that is not how we do that. <laughs> no, you see, there's the recovery. I'm not fucking up. What about you guys? What what sandbox games have you guys played? Because I'm the sandbox, like, fucking mastermind. Like, I can list every sandbox <laughs> game and just fucking, like, give you every fucking aspect of what's what's good and what's not. Really? Could you? Go ahead. Who who emailed us this time, Pete? <laughs> Jimmy. <laughs> emailed us at Improv Gamers, just like you can, and said, <coughs> Nick, I know you're a big sandbox person, and I played The Witcher, but I only did one-third of what I've been doing in Fallout 4. In Fallout 4, it says I completed about four days, 96 hours. Why do you think I'm just enjoying Fallout 4 so much more than these other open worlds? I think that you're enjoying Fallout 4 more than Witcher because you have not been playing Witcher enough. <laughs> um, as as the, the, the issue that I come across whenever I answer questions like this is that, that people tend to get caught up in the sandbox of a game as opposed to the, the actual game. So in Witcher, you have all these side quests that you can do and it's very like... It's very open and broad, and, and, and you can explore everything. You can legitimately explore every aspect of Witcher um, at any given moment. Whereas in Fallout and Skyrim, like, there are certain things you can't do if you do certain things the wrong way. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 if you take on a certain path, and let's say that it's a, a, um, a good guy path in Fallout or Skyrim then you've just completely locked yourself from 25% of the game. Yeah. So you feel like there's more to do, but you haven't been able to yeah. touch it. Whereas Witcher... like well, That's could, why you would do multiple saves for that kind yeah. of game. Yeah, but whereas like Witcher, like you can explore every aspect of that game. Like the, the, I, don't, I don't think anything really closes off to you because you chose to be one type of a person. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I get you. It's just, for me, I will always put the stake for Witcher. It's one of my uh, contenders for Game of the Year. Next to Until Dawn. Most likely to break. <laughs> but anyway, I, I, I digress. No, I liked Witcher because I'm not a big open world fan. I'm not like you. But I was always, always proud of CG Project Red. And to see them and what they gave, it's a beautiful game. It was fun to play. The story, the main story was engaging. The side missions were just as good. Like, I have never put 70 plus hours into a game. Never. Maybe the last time I did that was... Final Fantasy X, X-2, around there. Yeah. Like I, and for that game to keep my interest for that long, it's absolutely astounding. I enjoyed Until Dawn, just an example. But it wasn't 70 hours, because it didn't need to be 70 yeah. hours. But with Well, it's a very linear game, yeah. anyway. But with Witcher and being open world and all this, this story and just the dynamics where it's like, okay, if you go here, you're going to die. But you can do this side quest, you know? Oh, you, if you talk to this guy, you could do this. Oh, this is where you can go to find Siri. Oh, she's not here? Now try here. Like, and it would just keep you interested. And that's why I think when it comes to worth your money, it's, is the story there? And can it hold you with the main story and the side you see, the, the other part of it is, a lot of people confuse open world with sandbox. And open world doesn't necessarily mean sandbox. Um, Grand Theft Auto, in my opinion, is, is an open, open world, world yeah. but it's not a sandbox game. A sandbox infers that you can do just about anything within the mission parameters, or, or even outside of the mission parameters. Within, let's say you have a specific objective. There are no parameters by which you can limit yourself within that yeah. mission. Whereas, Grand Theft Auto, when you're doing a mission, you have to follow him this closely. 
You yeah, can't yeah. let that guy die. You same can, thing with you know, Assassin's Creed. Same thing with Assassin's Creed. Yeah, that's that's actually. an open world game. Um, but Sandbox, what, what Assassin's Creed does better than Grand Theft Auto, Sandbox lets you approach those missions in many, in different, many different ways. So in Assassin's Creed, you can throw uh, a, a, a bomb at the guy to kill him, or you can assassinate him like you normally would as an assassin. Or you can poison his poison drink. his drink, or you can you know yep, there's there's exactly. different options. Fallout is very much the same way. You can snipe them from afar. You can get up close and personal. Yeah, that's you all can you get to follow the back. point A yep. to point B. Well, not not just that. Even if you don't have to follow everything point A to point B, what's the way that you're killing people? You're shooting them. That, that, that that's pretty hey, much. I it. I tend to use the police baton. Yeah, you're I, use, <laughs> I use the car, but I just run them over, make it easy on myself. Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, like you, you, you have to. Generally, it's an all-out warfare in Grand Theft Auto. There's not really a sneaking around and going behind their back and stuff like that, unless the mission specifies yeah. that you do that. Like you're not, you're not, you're really going sandbox. In you could do anything. Like for example, like you said, Just Cause Two and in Just Cause Three, you know, it's like, oh, you have to take this person down in the car. You can either glide to them and just blow up the car like that. You could set explosives on an upcoming bridge and blow up yeah. the bridge. You could do whatever you, you can want. You can tether the car to, to yeah. a roof. The roof and yeah. just watch it Or tether it to a fucking helicopter and watch it fly away and then rocket launch the fucking yeah, like, helicopter yeah. and destroy. <laughs> like, you can do so much. approach it in so many different ways. Um, and I think that's what's the great thing about what the... the Damn, you're making me want to play Just Cause 3. Zero, Zero Dawn or Zero... Horizon. Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah. Right? That's the great thing about that is that your hunting can be in any way that you yeah. want to hunt. It doesn't necessarily have to be it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, oh, you know, I'm Torok and I'm shooting a bow at yeah. a dinosaur. It could be I'm gonna I'm gonna tether the fucking gigantic metallic T Rex to the ground or, while I'm fighting yeah. him. Or, or I can go. I'll put trip mines around. Yeah, Horizon Zero know. Dawn. Sorry. So so sandbox is a very different concept than open world. And open world usually implies sandbox, but not always. The way that Grand Theft Auto does it is that Grand Theft Auto will let you go work out. Or play a video game, or play golf, or do yoga training, or uh, tennis, or tennis, or you know, destroy the tennis teacher's house for sleeping with your wife. <laughs> I remember that mission. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there, there's, you know, there's, there's a lot that's lost in translation. But you know, for me, me, the, the, the basic, the basic premise would be open world is Grand Theft Auto, and sandbox is, um, fuck, no, just cause, no, fuck, Minecraft. Minecraft is sandbox, whereas Grand Theft yeah. Auto is is open world, and there's there's a big difference between the two. So do you think sand uh, sandbox games are worth your money more than open world? I feel I feel like sandbox games are far worth your money, even open world games. Open world games and sandbox games I feel are far more worth your money per buck against any other kind so of. So if I said there. to you, play Goat si uh, Goat Simulator. Would you play because it's open Shut world? Shut the fuck up. I probably would, actually. I just saw something on that, and I was like, that's actually kind of cool. I want to. I kind of want to play Gold Simulator. I know you would. That's why I <laughs> is, um, is Oblivion a sandbox game? Yeah, Oblivion, I would say. Is it? Elder Scrolls Oblivion? Yeah. You could do Cause that was the one outside Because here's the deal, because I liked, um, what, what came before Oblivion? Was that Elder Scrolls? Oh, Elder Scrolls 3. Elder Scrolls 3, but I think that was only PC. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that was only PC, and then before that was Elder Scrolls 2 and 1, which I don't think were... No, no, because I, I remember, like, there was a game, it was, it was Oblivion, then it's Skyrim, and then there's the one game, I remember, Morrowind. Yeah, Morrowind came after, oh, yeah, yeah, came after Oblivion, no, no, right before Oblivion. That's what it was, okay. Yeah. Morrowind, I wasn't crazy about, Oblivion I had a lot of fun with, I didn't touch Skyrim, because it's just way too much shit for me to do, so... Yeah, I mean, it Morrowind, really yep, that's correct. I was, okay, thank you, I was, I, I, that, I, that would have driven me crazy you know, for like a week. Like, like, like Fable. Xbox and Microsoft Windows. Like Fable, Fable was a, a very sandbox game. That's, okay, I, you know, like, that, Fable yeah. was a very sandbox game, I would you say could definitely, choose magic, you could choose... Yep. You could choose melee. You could choose guns. You know, you didn't have yeah. to. Like I said, fans, definitely check out the Fable games if you ever get a shot. They're a lot of fun. I think I think the Fable games are a lot. Mm -hmm. I'll say I, it. I've said it, and Jeremy and I have both said it plenty of times. I think Fable is better than Elder Scrolls. I do shoot. I shots do fired, but no, like no, I really got a kick out of Fable. Like I saw my friend play the first one, and I was like, all right, so I've seen the whole game with you playing. I'll play the second one straight through myself. 
And I love that game because literally you can do all these different decisions. I had three fucking wives in three different towns with like four or five different kids and I got an STD, excuse me. <laughs> but just that, that whole aspect of like how you can have all these different towns, all these different scenarios, you can do certain things. But I do like the whole good and evil aspect. Like yeah, you can go yeah. And then the white changes. Yep. Yeah. I love and Fable. His, his, yeah. I just remember, what was it, Um, in Fable 2 where you can do all the good path, you work up to a certain point and then you go a good or an evil path and you, oh fuck, what is it? It's a scene where you get um, taken by the cult to the special castle or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember like, if you don't, like, basically I remember playing it and basically it said if I don't, once I get past this point, I can't come back. So I actually went and did all the other side quests and everything else before I went to whatever the monks or the cult takes yep. you. Because I want to see what else was there. I'm like, I don't want to go to this next point of plot yeah, before yeah. I have everything else I can do. So See, when you talk about sandbox games, I think that's perfect for a holiday thing. If you can one game, you get a sandbox. Whether it be Just Cause 3, Witcher, Metal Gear, what have you. That is the best bang for your buck because you can get lost in yeah, that world. Yeah, you can get lost in those worlds and you can... You can Ride them until the next Christmas or holiday. Kwanzaa. Holiday. Kwanzaa. Holiday. Kwanzaa. Christmaka. Christmaka. <laughs> Christmaka. Yes. That's going to be a thing. You know Christmaka? Christmaka. Christmas and Hanukkah. Together. <laughs> Forever. Thanks. That was the joke. <laughs> I'm not saying because I got yelled at. We did good time. for these three episodes and now you attack me. Yeah, we actually got along these episodes. Fuck you, Pete. <laughs> Fuck you, Fuck Nick. you for getting along with me. Fuck Bethesda you. Bethesda was the winner of the three. <laughs> Fuck you both. Doom Nintendo is the runner-up. And Doom. Unravel looks fantastic. Fuck you, Arnie. That game is a joke. <laughs> it's a big joke. I like, I like And the developer else. looked like a fucking moron on the goddamn stage. <laughs> he was high on something. He was high on something. It looks like it's just a downloadable game, which I'm excited for. It looked like 20 When's that come out? Well, I'm still waiting on... You know what I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky with VR. No Man's Sky. Well, I don't know if I'm going to get the VR headset. That just looks completely ridiculous. I don't know if you guys have seen this. The the, the, the post that was on the Facebook page with the the people walking on that that device so that it actually feels like it's really VR. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, check it out on uh, Improv Gaming Space Between Two Words on Facebook. Mm Mm-hmm. Also, you could check out our reaction to PSX this coming up. While you're, when this goes live, it should be up. Patent pending, but it should be. <laughs> so make sure you check that out. All the, all the what, what should we say? All the surprises. Yeah. Hopefully, by the time we're recording this, Shuhei will let us change our names. <laughs> you and, stupid ass. Fuck. And they price cut the Vita. How nice would that be if That'd they be price... Nice. I think we. I think we would agree. I think right we there. would. Yeah. I think we would go there and get it. <laughs> Next recording session, we just go. <laughs> we're just we're just playing the Vita, and Jeremy's doing all the episodes. We're just like, coming out soon. <laughs> What's coming out for Vita? What's coming out for, coming Vita? Out for Vita? It's coming out for get nothing on Vita. Shit. PC bro. What PC bro. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Where's the Gatling gun? <laughs> No, you gotta go over there and look, look, look. You see what? On <laughs> oh, the sidebar, I love those commercials where, like, for like GameFly and stuff like that, where like the guys are like, "We love playing video games," and they're like hitting like seventeen buttons. Where you're like, "This is not how you play a game." <laughs> I love the one where it's um, oh no, the what's it, the Tostino Snacko? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, I'm starving. We the compromise. <laughs> like that's not how VR would work. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh, I think we did a good job this week. I, it's good to be back. It is good to be back. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> dramatic Bye. Pa- dramatic pause. Dramatic pause. <laughs> be sure to check us out on YouTube.com slash Improv Gaming. Like us or subscribe to the video. Keeps the lights on. It keeps the lights on and we damn sure need some lights. You know how I know that? I'm going to show you guys right now. Excuse me oh, for God. a second. Oh, God, no. Oh, God. Ass ahoy. Uh, oh, ass ahoy. We keep, you guys keep the lights on because if you don't... Nick, Nick turns black. Damn it, he green. <laughs> Are you coming back? I'll just go in the back. <laughs> it's a family of <sighs> There we go. Oh, ah, be sure to oh. email us at uh-huh. improvgamers at gmail.com. You also can find us on Twitch. RKO. <laughs> at improvcap. IPGJ Bird. <laughs> an improv cop. Oh, he said it, so I... <laughs> But you touched him. <laughs> <laughs> you can also find us on Twitter at ProfCot. Improv at, Pete. 
Uh, Jimmy Poison 450. And at Improv Gaming for the uh, for the group all together. And Instagram at Improv Gaming. Okay. Underscore Gaming, that is. Make sure you check out the coming up episodes coming up. Next week is all about the game industry. Something I'm very excited. I'm very excited to talk about this. This is actually going to be one of, yeah. I think, I think one of our best series yep. of episodes. And then we got our holiday special, the... Chris Kippa. Chris Mahana Kwanzaa <laughs> There you go, coming up in two weeks, and then our game of the game year of the years. from all three of us, and then on Saturday, the IPG the Awards. The IPG Awards. Where I could have sworn Nintendo was the runner up of E3. I don't know what Doom you're Doom was about. game of the year. <laughs> As always, game, game on. on. What they said. <laughs> <laughs>